Athletic greatness comes in all shapes and all sizes. It doesn't come naturally, but is achieved from hard work, diligence, and adversity. Along the journey, there's opportunity, and there's always struggle. There is triumph, and there is defeat, and there is always a story behind the glory. When it comes to great Louisiana high school coaches, it's hard to look past the credentials of Frank Monica, who spent a half century coaching in Louisiana at Lutcher, Riverside Academy, Jesuit, and St. Charles Catholic. And I've never seen uh, uh, a coach have so much passion uh, taking teenage boys and turning them into young men. Coach Monica and I crossed paths 40 years ago. He's uh, one of the icons in his business. Frank, congratulations. 284 high school football victories, state championships at three schools, just remarkable. But I want to take you back a few years. I want to take you back to those magical times on Friday nights in the river parishes in deep South Louisiana. And the whole community is supporting the football program and it's on everybody's mind and it's small town America at its best. Do you remember those days? Uh, very well. I started uh, at Lutcher High School and uh, then I, I remember my first job at Lutcher High School was three sports and um, I had five classes, uh, academic classes, and then my salary was what 70, did you 7500 a year, you know, a year. And I, I taught uh, social studies and civics and, and world history and enjoyed that, but it was really tough because you had two, three different sports to prepare for. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I understand there were times, just a few, where you might heat somebody's gumbo, correct? Yeah, exactly. You know, in the River Paris, it's really, really big. I think uh, it's uh, the jambalaya, the gumbos are there, and nobody makes it better than the people in River Parishes. And, and on Friday night, it was a big deal because that's exactly what you went to house to house, and along with all the bonfires they made on the levees, I mean, everybody had open house, and there might have been a libation or two also, especially on Tuesday night at the quarterback club. While Monica is known for his football mentoring, he started his brilliant career in baseball as an all-conference player on the 1970 Division II College World Series baseball team at Nichols State that reached the championship game. So tell me about the story, which I find amusing, many years ago when you found out you were Lutcher head coach. Uh, it was a middle of the night uh, encounter, was it not? It was. Uh, my head football coach was a guy by the name of Lou Sanamon, who's not, who sure. took the, the baseball job at Northeast at the time. It was ULM. And um, he resigned. And well, a couple of nights later, two school board members showed up in my house. It, it was like 1030 at night. And it was a knock on the door. And they said, congratulations to you, Frank. I said, for what? And he said, you're the new head football coach at Lecture High School. We had just won the state championships. I was the offensive coordinator. In fact, we won the state championship in football and baseball in 75. And, um, and uh, he said, you're the new head coach. And I said, I'm sorry, guys. Get out of here. I'm 26 years old. I'm not following the state championship. I graduated 30 seniors. I said, I'm not taking it. They said, you have to. And, I, I, and they stayed there for an hour and a half, convinced me to take the job. I didn't want to, but I was sort of forced to do it. And, uh, you know, and the guy told me, he said, Frank, it's a short distance between assistant coach's desk and the head coach, but it's a long walk. And I understood what he meant. It meant that, you know, if an administrator, a player, a parent gets a headache, you have to take the aspirin. Monica compiled 284 victories in his time as head coach with state titles at Lutcher, Riverside, and St. Charles. I've been blessed with two great parents who are the greatest influences in my life, but the greatest influence on my career is uh, Uncle Frankie. You know, working for Coach Monica wasn't always easy, right? You know, he was an intense guy, and I think the players would say the same. But it's definitely something that when you look back on, uh, you really appreciate going through those struggles, and you really understand that all he ever wanted was for you to be the best. He's a guy that everybody looks up to. He's such an inspiration to coaches who have coached at every level and aspired to be where he was. And he's a great mentor of young coaches and uh, the kids that play for him absolutely love him. You won 
284 high school football games, state championships at Lutcher, at Riverside Academy, and at St. Charles, and a special success at St. Charles with 12 semifinal appearances and six championship games. Your high school coaching career, not at one school, not at two schools, but at three schools, is as good as anybody, anytime, anywhere. And when you look back on it, is there one thing that stands out above the victories? I think the one thing is, is, is the relationships that you have with players. You know, and uh, you know, I, I used to tell people, I treated all my players the same, all bad. You know, there's one of those things I think that discipline is very, very important when you're talking to kids. I think that, you know, it's, it's very, very important to get their attention. And, uh, you know, a lot of times if you don't give them structure, I wish every kid played football. I wish every boy would play football so they can at least one thing, they can learn structure and they can learn how, how to take orders and be on time. That was a big thing with me. If you make the little things important, big things take care of themselves. Now, a lot of that I got from some my, a couple of my college coaches, Larry Smith, who, who hired me to Tulane. He really, really was a guy that was big in the Dale Carnegie and motivation, things like that. So to me, that, that was, he was a, a mentor too. And when I got back to high school after staying in college for 12 years, I think that made me a, a, a better coach. Frank, do you think that we will sink and deteriorate on the high school football level with the oncoming of NIL and all of the other things that uh, weren't even considered when, when you were coaching and winning championships. But are we, are we on the, the edge of the cliff in terms of tipping over and making high school sports more professional? Uh, absolutely. I think that what's happened is selfishness has crept into sports. And that's what you're seeing now. Uh, the, the, you're seeing people being more selfish and worried about things. Now, how do you be fair to an offensive lineman that doesn't have a deal? How do you, how do you fair to the rest of your team? How do you look them in the eye and say, well, this guy's got a special treatment. He's got a special deal, but I don't. And I block for this guy. I work just as hard. I, I'm in a weight room uh, more often. In fact, I'm, I'm, it takes me more to complete my task than he does. He's more a natural talent, and that's the guys who want. You know, these skilled athletes are making all the money. Those guys, those offensive linemen don't even have fingerprints, you know, they, they, you know they, because nobody knows who they are. But I think the bottom line is that it's got to stop somewhere. Someone has to, has, to, has to stop it, whether it's the courts, whether the rules, the NCAA, whether the high school athletic association, somebody has to step forward because uh, even in high school, we're drifting towards the path of that same thing. But Monica was not just a coach, but a beloved member of the communities in which he worked. So many people that uh, he coached at a certain place or had some type of connection, no matter where he's uh, coached, he's lived in Laplace, he was born and raised in Garyville, just like myself. Um, so it brings a sense of pride to the whole area. What was it like in those communities that are so tightly bound, and especially on the Fridays, and we've already talked about that, but what was it like being in a leadership role at a, at a, at a very high level where everybody in the world knew the football coach's name? No question. When you went to the grocery store, when you went to the gas station, everybody knew who you were, but that was a good thing. And it made you work harder. I mean, many nights at one or two o'clock in the morning, designing plays or trying to find a way to put kids in position to win games. And uh, the, the late hours that you spent on the practice field and stuff like that. And, but the kids had to buy into it and the parents, the parents had to buy into what you were doing. It was important. And in, in those communities, especially River Parishes, whether no matter whether St. Charles Catholic, uh, uh, Riverside or L Lutcher High School, where I first started, the parents accepted the fact that you were pushing them hard. Most people have a comfort zone, and 85% uh, of the people are average, but the 15% the, the that you can push above average, that comes from coaching, and that's where we come in, to push you to make you better than what you are. Frank Monica, what do you miss the most? I, I, miss, I miss the relationship, I miss designing plays, and it sounds really, really funny, I miss, I miss uh, practices. Uh, whether it's in, in baseball especially, because every position has a group of fundamentals that are separate than anything else. You know, whether you're shortstop and uh, first baseman or catcher, those fundamentals are different. Offensive linemen are basically the same. Uh, linebackers are secondary. I mean, uh, the, I just miss teaching, uh, designing plays and, and teaching on practice because the game time, sometimes the, the kids get nervous or whatever it is, it, you just don't see the fruits of your labor. 
But the most rewarding thing is the coach, though. If you draw something up and you see a play or you teach a kid how to throw a curveball and all of a sudden he goes out there and he executes that play or he executes how to throw the curveball and you can just see him smiling like you swallow a banana sideways. You know what I mean? So that's what you get. That's a big reward in coaching. I think one of the greatest gifts I got from him personally was having confidence and preparation, right? Being so prepared that, that that's where your swag or confidence came from. I think that's the kind of confidence he coached with, not an arrogance. He coached with the confidence that he was as prepared that he could be. Uh, and I think that that's what he, thing he left to his assistant coaches. Uh, and I mean, he, again, he had a great impact on my career. And, and a lot of people ask about, you know, following a legend. And I'm still just trying to do whatever I can to keep him, to, you know, for him to be proud of me and be proud of our community and our school. His St. Charles Catholic family honored him with Frank Monica Field. He has been named to the Louisiana Sports Athletics Hall of Fame and in 2024 received a top honor for the state's sports professionals, joining an elite list of other prep coaches as a member of the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. And let's wrap it up with this. Is there anything you would have done differently? Not, not a thing. You know, I've had, I had opportunities to go back with uh, Larry Smith, Arizona, when we left Tulane. I had an opportunity to go with, um, with Mac Brown back to Tulane at one time. And I decided to stay at respective schools when I was at Jesuit High School for, the, for those years. But I decided to stay there. And I don't look back. And I said, it said don't look back because someone's gaining on you. Well, that's, uh, that was sort of my thing. And, and I'm so happy because I had a lovely wife, you know, then she's my agent. And then she was, a, you know, she's the best teammate I ever had. And she was, a, and I think she guided me and said, listen, uh, but she took care of the kids. She took care of the kids. She raised my four kids. And uh, I was just kind of the come back. And I didn't see him, especially when I was in college football for those 12 years. So that, that's one thing I'm very, very proud of is the fact that I bounced around a little bit, but yet it was very rewarding. And I think I made the right decision. You've been one of the best ever. Congratulations on your induction well, into the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame in 2020. Well, I've been very blessed. The good Lord took care of me, for giving me a long life so I can be here today. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this conversation, the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame Museum has exhibits and stories about Louisiana's sports greats. Natchitoches is where history and fun blend with our state's rich sports culture. Find travel planning tips at Natchitoches.com.